When I first installed the C4 Low Pro Bumper, one of the reasons why I'd done that was because I, I wanted to retain <clears throat> sort of the factory look of the front end, and I was also growing increasingly um, conscious, I think this was the exact quote, increases, increasingly conscious of the, of the added weight that different modifications add to the vehicle. Um, and this was rooted, this was stemmed from primarily because of the fact that not only is the 4Runner vastly underpowered, and I know I keep saying that, it's actually probably for what it is, it's not really underpowered. I would just personally prefer to have more power considering the fact that I tow a trailer and have added a bunch of weight. It is what it is. Uh, I know I can supercharge it. I don't really know that I want to supercharge it. I, I still have that in, in my brain, but I just, the pros and cons, they just, they're not balancing for me yet. But that was kind of the concern. I was, I was, I was, I was concerned about the weight. And I was concerned about the potential long-term ramifications of that in terms of mileage, drivability, um, you know, comfort, all that other stuff. But at some point in time last year, <clears throat> I don't know what it was, I don't know when it was, but I'd kind of already decided that at some point in time I'm going to be getting a rear bumper. I had been thinking about it, talking about it, I've been talking to CBI, talked to Expedition One, I talked to all these different companies, uh, you know, at, at expos and events and online and people that own them, et cetera, et cetera. And had kind of come down to, I know C4 was in the works of coming out with a rear bumper, uh, you know, when I was kind of like going through this thought process and has come out with one since. And I think it's, it's a great looking bumper. It wasn't the direction that I wanted to go. And so when I kind of decided that I wanted to go with the rear bumper option, I don't know if you've ever been through this, but these seeds start kind of getting planted and these ideas of the kind of what you might want in the future and then like why and so that's kind of where all this started. I, I, I'll be right, I'll be right back. <sighs> Sorry, gym, personal study, smoothie, morning routine. So that's kind of where it started. I uh, started thinking about a rear bumper. Then I kind of started thinking about a front bumper and the benefits that come with it, the protection, the increased opportunity for me to be able to not have to worry so much about where I'm going. I mean, that's kind of a false negative, if that's the right way to use that, because you still need to think about where you're going and you need to be careful. But that's kind of where it all started. The more I thought about it, I was less concerned about the weight I was adding to the vehicle. And the reason why is because I started thinking about how I drive the vehicle. Now, if I had a sports car that had like 300 horsepower and maybe was turbocharged, and the reason why I had it was because I enjoyed the off the line acceleration. You know, even if I wasn't tracking it or racing it or whatever, it's just, you enjoy that, uh, the exhilaration, the feeling that you get when you accelerate quickly. I didn't drive the Forerunner like that. I, I never drove the four, even but like before I never drove the Forerunner like that. And then when I added the speed booster, speed booster, is it called the speed booster? When I added that thing, it, Obviously, it didn't increase the acceleration, but it increased the responsiveness of the throttle. But I didn't get that because I wanted to drive it like a sports car. I got that because I felt like the accelerator pedal was just so hard to press down to get it to move. By the way, I still love that thing. So at the end of the day, the 4Runner is not a race car. It doesn't have a whole lot of power. I, again, I use caution in saying that because I think the power is fine given what it is. But it's, it's not going to be a 400 horsepower V8. It's just not, you know, it's, it's not gonna give you that exhilarating feeling of acceleration. It's not what it's intended to do, and that's not how I drove it anyway. So I guess at the end of the day, like, what difference does it make if it's a little bit slower? You know what I mean? Now it functions the way I want it to function. Now it provides me with what I wanted it to do. I wanted to get the tire out from the back. I wanted to have protection on the bumper, which by the way, I've already used. I wanted to put extra fuel on the back. I wanted to have additional storage on the back. The swing arms are kind of a, make it a little bit of a pain to get in the back, but I'm, I'm getting used to that. I wanted increased protection on the front. You know, um, I just, I, that's what I wanted. And so I wasn't so concerned about the weight anymore. It's already slow. Uh, so this is gonna be five and a quarter on this front one, mm -hmm. and five and three quarters on this rear. Coming across here, it just looks weird oh. because of this, but 
for the most part, it 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 kind of looks like it's not super level, but once it's all cut and trimmed, you'll see that it it fits really well, basically the way it is. Do you remember it used to be popped out right here? Where, how did you fix it? I just once I once I had that mud flap off, I just unbolted this and popped it out and straightened that little piece kind of out. Bent and, it a little bit. And... Yeah, I just straightened it back out and popped it back in there. I don't know why I never thought. <laughs> I didn't ever really give it a whole lot of effort, but I guess you just kind of bent it back into place and there yeah. you go. Yep, pretty much. Anybody want that for hundred bucks? Not anymore. <laughs> Fifty bucks. I was joking around with Mike because somebody had actually sent me a message asking me if they could give me a hundred bucks for the portion of the front bumper that we cut off. And I, I thought it was an unusual request because in my opinion, the portion of the front bumper that we cut off was like totally unusable for anything. And I know that everybody, you know, that this person probably had their their purposes, their uses, or whatever. But I wasn't willing to go to the effort, um, and and frankly, I, I'm not sure this person understood what they were asking. So I just, you know, nixed it. My knuckles sweet. I must must have something on there from earlier from lunch. Obviously, the first step in installing the rear bumper is put is cutting you know the portion of the rear bumper off that you that you don't need. The, the interesting thing is is that I have like something in my eye. I've had a lot of conversations with people that you know regarding apprehension of cutting like body panels or bumpers or drilling holes in the roof. Drilling holes in the roofs are. Uh, I've done it before, but I, I I can see that a little more because you can't like replace your roof. The, like the bumper covers, for instance. I mean, I was just looking on Rock Auto, for instance. The rear bumper cover is like 140 bucks. The front bumper cover is like 150 bucks. It's primed and not painted. So yeah, you'd have to go get it painted. But you know, I mean, it doesn't cost a fortune to get a bumper cover that's already primed and ready to be painted. It doesn't cost a fortune to get it painted. So hold that thought. All right, bye. That's, uh, that was my wife. They, they're at the AT&T store and Oscar, you remember Oscar? We bought him the fourth gen. You may actually, you may actually see him. He may, he may not. I don't want to make any promises. Anyway, he's moved out here to Utah with us for a couple of months or something. Just, I, I don't know. You know, he's 19 and trying to figure it out. So it is what it is. So yeah, I don't see any big issue in, um, I don't think there's any problem cutting the rear bumper because if I ever want to go back and I want to, you know, put the vehicle back to stock for some reason, I mean, putting the bumper on was, I mean, this is a big ordeal. And if I want to replace it, like it's going to be an ordeal.
two little brackets will unbolt. These two. Um, yep, these two small ones. The This just stays, okay. it's cleared. Um, and then we also will cut the exhaust and lengthen it about a quarter, half inch. Just bring it down a little bit? Yep, otherwise it rubs on the bottom. Oh yeah, this one's like starting to like cramp up right here. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so key takeaways. Measure, mark, cut right before the mark, sand down, deburr, and then put some of that pinch welt stuff on there to give it that nice finished look. On to the install. Ashley, these cookies are amazing. She gave me, I think I told you this a couple of days ago, she gave me 14. She told me I need to gain weight, get fat, and eat all these cookies. So I'm doing my best, and really it's not that hard because they're amazing. What's up next is we're gonna put on this rear bumper right here onto the back of the Forerunner. I think, Mike, this is a more, this is a more involved install, right? Because you got like more parts and pieces, right? Yep. The rear's gonna so take once longer. So the rear on, then we gotta go through and assemble all the swing arms and. It's pretty exciting. Isn't the front awesome? Doesn't it look great? The rear's gonna look just as awesome. I can't wait. saying I mean you can see here with the exhaust pipe I mean it really if it was still attached it, it would not clear this right here and so what they're what they're doing is their weld guy come over and and they'll just weld a sort of an extension piece into here to kind of extend this down a little bit so that it won't obviously bang against this and it'll be clear of that All right, so what's next? Uh, right now I'm just cleaning these, the spindle up, and uh, then we're gonna start assembling all the swing arms. Just helps with sliding when, they, when you put them on. What did we, so we're doing, we're doing the Rotopax mount then, right? And so that, would that go here? Yeah, so it's on the other side of that, basically. Right. So then the this, mounts would... This would be the small table if you did that. Yeah. Um, but I think yours said passenger, just the passenger side table, which is the larger one. Yeah, that's... So a lot of people don't seem to care for the small one. Yeah, I just need one table. Just because it's, it's so small that there's not a ton of stuff that you can put on it. Okay. But... The bigger one definitely is nice, especially, you know, for setting things down on mm -hmm. while you're cooking on them, you know. Yep. They'll hold about a, a camp, you know, the little camp, camp stoves, stove. you know, because they're not, they're not built to, you know, hold the weight of a person or something on there or anything like that, but. 
And then the Rotopax mounts, that's just a standard. Yeah, so it just mounts right there. Those are the Rotopax Got it. mounts. Um, so. What are the other holes for? Just sort so of standard. These dimension. outside holes are for where our can carrier would go. Okay. And then these, these are gonna be all your, just the different styles of roto packs right here. Um, and then these are just license plate. This is the license plate light. Okay, and then so then the roto packs, you just do the four. I'm sorry, the two gallon. Yeah, the two gallons. Be the more uh, we'll square. Build, we'll bolt up here, Got it. you know, and they'll they'll stay, you know, just above that. And then, okay. Is there a high lift jack mount on this thing? Yep, this is the high lift Ooh, jack. Look at that, I can take it off the roof maybe. Is there any maintenance that I need to do on the uh, on the spindles? Greasing uh, anything regularly or I mean? Nope, they're, they're all gonna be a sealed bearing. Okay. And so you really shouldn't have any issues. What if they, I mean, I mean, will they get rained on all the time? They're gonna get wet? What if they get submerged? Well, is this, there... is, this has a, a seal that sits at the top. Okay. Shouldn't really get anything in there because the bearings themselves are sealed. I'll show you later. But... Okay. Yeah, it shouldn't have any issues, but. That's the sealed bearing? Yeah. So really you shouldn't have too many issues with them. Got it. Seals are kind of what seals it in, man. Yep. Yeah, just cleaning out all the powder coat and stuff oh. out of there to, because um, otherwise it can be a real pain to put these on, and if you got to take them off, they're even more of a pain. Okay, so we've just got back from lunch. It's a little after one. The front bumper is done. Rear bumper is mounted. Uh, swing arms are on, kind of putting the, all the hardware and stuff together to get the rear swing arms. Uh, I don't know, ready to go so you can like latch them in and all the, whatever. Uh, really, really, really close to being done. Got the lower control arm skids for the front. Got them back from powder coat. They're gonna go on after we do the alignment. I'm hoping we can go to the alignment today. We'll see, fingers crossed. And um, that's where we're at. finished wiring in the, the license plate light and so they just tap that into the you know to the to the tail light running lights that's why this tail light is out and uh, obviously we'll put that back in a minute 
Um, the only kind of loose end that we've got here um, is 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 the backup camera. That's that's something uh, they've got some recommendations, but we're not taking care of that today. So I'm gonna miss that, but I'll have to I'll have to figure that out. kind of helps be a barrier too you know yeah. from water being able to get in there right. but what are you laughing at i'm giving bruce a hard time <laughs> i just need to tighten these up on the back side and so this is adjustable you know if you ever get a different wheel or offset you know or go to bigger tires this whole thing will slide oh okay so like it, it'll See, it'll, it'll move. It moves a little wanna... bit. You just didn't tighten it down yet. Yeah, it, exactly. I didn't want to. These little screws screw in and they put tension on those. Okay. On those little ball inside of there. And so, um, if for some reason it keeps like dropping every time you go down roads, I mean, all you have to do is just screw those in some and that thing will you know, like that, that's pretty easy. But if I mean you take and screw that thing down, it's not gonna, right. it's not gonna come off there. So you can essentially lock it in, you mm -hmm. know, and then you just got to adjust it after you, you know, get to wherever you're wherever you're going. That's that's just about it. The only thing left to do is adjust the front coils. I'm hoping the goal is hopefully to get that adjusted and maybe over to alignment today. I'm hoping because if we can get it aligned today, then um, we won't really have anything else to, that needs to get done. We'll be about wrapped up. It kind of feels like we're, uh, you know, we're like out of the hospital. You know how it is if like, if you ever have to be in the hospital for a couple of days and you're like, I just want to go home. It's kind of what it feels like, right? I mean, don't get me wrong, I've enjoyed being here and I've enjoyed the process and I've enjoyed the experience and you know, the team at CBI has been amazing, but it's nice to have the vehicle out of the garage. So yeah, that was a blast. Overall feel, it drives great. I love it. As for mileage, I was actually surprised to find that it hasn't really changed. Before bumpers, while trailering the turtle back, it was around 11, and honestly, as of right now, it, it's, it's about the same. I've only been on one trip, but so far, it's about the same. Around town, I've been seeing around 14 to 14.5 MPGs. Uh, down in Florida, at like 13.5 was like the best I would ever see. Um, I've been meaning to look into the physics behind it because altitude has to have something to do with it. I would think that I would have less mileage the higher the altitude, but it seems like I have better fuel efficiency um, at the higher altitude. So I, I, I don't know. If you actually, if you know, if you know how that works, leave a comment below, uh, maybe describing the science behind it. Before bumpers up here, I was seeing about the same, 14 to 14.5, just kind of putting around town. And I know what you're thinking, the C4 bumper. What am I doing with the old C4 low pro winch bumper? By the way, I just had it Rhino aligned about six or eight months ago. I'm giving it away. Uh, I have nothing bad to say about this bumper. I was sending, I sent, I had been, I've been talking to Caleb, the owner of C4, and I told him, I've had a great experience, not only with the bumper, but with working with them. I think that they're a great company. I think that they make a great product. I've been very happy with it. And I think that whoever wins this will be extremely happy with it as well. Oh, and as a side note, it also includes, I think it's a 25 inch extreme LED light bar. It includes that light bar as well. Details in the giveaway are in the description below. Make sure you read that and make sure that you share it with everybody. And um, so yeah, good luck to you on the giveaway and we'll see you on the flippity dippity. <laughs> Sorry, that's, I know it's lame.